Welcome to the recorded service of morning prayer for Temiskaming Deanery. This service is for Palm Sunday for March 28th. My name is Derek Neal. I'll be leading this service and with me today I have Reverend Beth Hewson who will preach and also uh, read and as before uh, Janet Parfit will exercise the ministry of music in this service. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first worship song, the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. All glory, Lord, and honor, who will be king of kings, to whom the beasts of Jehovah, and to us and us reign, the wonderful king of Israel, the David. Now I exalt 
Almighty and ever-living God, in tender love for all our human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and suffer death upon a cruel cross. May we follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am a forgotten, like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. Helper of the helpless, comfort of the afflicted, may your servants who stand in the midst of evil find strength in the knowledge of your presence and praise you for the wonders of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our second reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. We're going to change the format a little bit and do a sermon reflection first and then read the gospel. Let us pray. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here it is, nearly the end of our second COVID Lent. Well, COVID or not, today we celebrate the Liturgy of the Palms and the Passion of our Lord. Over the next eight days, today, Sunday, through Easter, Christians around the world will come together to observe the events of Holy Week. Each of the Gospels writes about this week from their own perspective. This week is the crux of our faith. It's during this week where we pause, pray, and reflect about our Savior, the message he brought to the world, and the incredible sacrifice he made for us on the cross. We will hear the Passion narrative from the Gospel of Mark, and it is a longish gospel, one of the longest in the church year, and two of us will read the gospel. Now, if we take a bird's eye view of the week and follow Jesus, we see that there are some critical times where the crowd radically changes their minds in who they think Jesus really is. And then there are some in the crowd who know exactly who he is and remain faithful to him throughout this agonizing journey. A title that greets Jesus when he enters Jerusalem and stays with him is that Jesus is the King of the Jews or the Messiah. And initially the crowds praise, adore, and shout hosannas to welcome the King into Jerusalem. We see a woman with great reverence and love anoint his body with a sweet smelling ointment, a costly ointment. And her actions allow the first murmurings of discontent to be voiced. One disciple deserts, deserts the king only to betray him later. And it's at that Passover meal, the betrayer again slips out to return with an armed crowd of men to arrest Jesus in the darkness of the night. The king of the Jews had inspired adoration and praise, and now we hear doubt, cynicism, and ridicule. And then in rapid succession, Jesus' reputation as a king is twisted and turned to fit the circumstances. In two sham trials, one with the chief priests and the second with Pontius Pilate, Jesus is charged with blasphemy, sedition, and being a threat to the establishment. The same crowd who shouted Hosanna now shout, crucify him. The soldiers ridicule, mock, and bow down before Jesus as if he was the king. And to ensure that all know the truth of this trial that results in the crucifixion nailed to the cross is the charge against Jesus, the king of the Jews. After Jesus' last breath, we hear the centurion who watched Jesus die and how he died speak the truth. Truly, this man was God's son. Let us now listen to the passion. It's our story, our narrative. It's our faith story. Let us follow our king. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the, poured the ointment on his head. 
But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him, betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. 
Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests in the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? but he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man, call, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate 
wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, hail, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide, to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sababaktin, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During this next Holy Week, Take some time to walk the journey with our Lord and our King. Ponder, pray, and reflect on his ultimate gift for us. The diocesan website and our churches have many resources to deepen our Holy Week and Easter experience. Amen. Let us pray. We come before you, Lord, knowing that to follow you is to follow the way of the cross. Yet we praise you, for we know as well that the way that leads to death is indeed the path to life eternal. Almighty God, we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving. We pray for your universal church, asking the spirit to guide and nurture her, that all may be one. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Fill every member of your church with the fire of your spirit instilled in your apostles as they went forth to spread the good news of Christ's self-giving love. May their courage be ours. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Linda, our primate, Anne, our Archbishop, 
Joan, our archdeacon, and the clergy and people of Algoma. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Jerusalem and for all who seek your will and your goodness. Give them a spirit of harmony. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for our Prime Minister Justin, our Premier Doug, and the leaders of our municipalities, that they may seek the ways of peace and justice in your world. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Have compassion on us all, especially the homeless, the poor, immigrants, prisoners, victims of war and violence, those impacted by natural disasters, those who suffered due to COVID, and those who protect and serve us all. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Bring comfort and healing to the sick, especially all those who are known to us personally and those known only to you alone. and a gentle passing to those who will enter your eternal kingdom this day. May your light and mercy shine upon them. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We thank you for the blessings of this life, for minds to think, hearts to love, and hands to work, for wills to follow you in the way of the cross, and for your grace that calls us to your heart of love. May we bless others as we have been so richly blessed. Lord of life, hear our prayer. May the hopes and dreams of every heart be known to you, most gracious God. We trust your love to do that for us, which is best for us. May we know peace beyond all telling and freedom from all fear through your infinite grace. Amen. Dear fellow travelers on the way of the cross, as we consider the sacrifice of Christ, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and abide with you this day and evermore. Our final worship song, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark all the tribes, let a cry. O Savior, keep pursue thy road with palms and scattered cloud and strow. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs shall begin, O captive death, and conquered sin 
Take all. 